Lot to break down here, but let's bring in our panel for the hour. We've got Kathy Craninger, former director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. We've also got Ishwar Prasad, Talani Senior Professor of Trade Policy and Professor of Economics at Cornell University. Uh, Ishwar, I want to start with you here because I know you've been watching this space very closely. We've heard so many people say that this isn't really about crypto at the end of the day. It is about the company FTX, how they operated. Give me your reaction first to the charges that we have seen come down so far. It is about crypto in one very important way, because if you think about crypto as an asset class, the basic requirements of an asset class are that you'll be able to keep those funds someplace safe, <clears throat> and there is custody of those accounts in a safe place, and to be able to trade those assets. That's what FTX was supposed to do. It was supposed to custody accounts and also allow for easy trading. Now it turns out that the very basic elements of these asset of this asset class cannot be easily sustained because FTX was supposed to be the safest part of the operation. What we are learning now is that a lot of crypto, while it is meant to be decentralized, is in fact heavily centralized through these exchanges, which are hardly decentralized by any measure. And while the notion of decentralization was supposed to remove these single points of fragility or vulnerability, what we are finding out is that the centralization actually leads to a lot of vulnerability. So the notion that crypto is a sector that can essentially escape the basic precepts of, of economics, finance, and corporate governance, that has certainly been put to the rest by the travails that FTX is undertaking. And also the fact that investors and consumers are willing to go in with their eyes blind um, and essentially got taken in by the razzle-dazzle of the new technology and did not do their due diligence is certainly very worrying for the prospects of this entire industry. And Kathy, Ishwar raises an important point there, not centralized in the sense that it's banks, but when you have it centralized around a particular exchange or a particular personality like an SBF, what does that actually do then to really the credibility of the industry? And especially as you have these parallel investigations going on with the SDNY, the SEC, and then of course, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission as well. Uh, there is no doubt this is a huge blow to the credibility of this industry. Someone who purported to be a true leader, who had a vision for a regulated industry, um, and and who was a responsible player. And and now, obviously, the wool is pulling, being pulled off of everyone's eyes here. And it looks like a classic case of fraud and greed, um, and certainly has all of the soap opera qualities of of a story that just is is. Uh, unbelievable, frankly, and I, I will echo the the absolute need for due diligence. I mean, the the investors, uh, it's clear, did not do some of this, but you also get to the malfeasance versus negligence that was the story that we've heard a bit in the media versus what you see in the indictments and and in the SEC and CFTC uh, allegations as well. So all of that is definitely going to be playing out here in the future and people will be looking closely at it. But I would say, yes, trading in crypto today is largely centralized. It's a, a matter of scale and other aspects of this. But you must have as a company, I mean, when you're purporting to put out uh, and custody uh, assets for clients and, and putting out a product to the public, you have to disclose uh, information. You have to have internal controls and risk management procedures. The things that you assert, you know, need to be true. And so this really, uh, I'll, I'll use Chair Gensler's uh, words, it's clearly a house of cards that fell about itself and, and harmed a lot of people. Yeah, Kathy, it's been interesting to see all the finger pointing in the aftermath of this. You know, you heard uh, lawmakers in this House hearing that's going uh, happening right now uh, point the finger at the SEC, saying there wasn't enough enforcement. We heard from Chair Gensler last week on our air on Yahoo Finance saying that this isn't necessarily about new regulation, that there can be enforcement mechanisms with the rules on the books right now. And then you've got the CFTC saying we don't have enough right now um, of a mandate here to go after some of these companies. How do you see it? So I, I will say the FTX situation is, is distinguishable from many of the questions about how this ecosystem and this industry should be regulated. As I said, the, you know, and that will play out. That will play out in, in courts and in, in the criminal proceedings, uh, as well as, uh, unfortunately, the bankruptcy filings and otherwise. So we're going to see 
the the risk management, corporate controls, governance uh, was not there that should be there, and and uh, you know that distinguishing that. But the question of you know what what uh, are the regulatory frameworks that should be in place for this ecosystem? Congress needs to act. Uh, there are some infrastructure dimensions like around stable coins uh, and, and how they are backed and reserved and making sure that that is overseen. Uh, some questions about, again, spot market oversight and really bringing in a regulator that can do that oversight like the CFTC. So those are things that Congress will put into place. But it is important to, to note to the public yeah, that's why you're seeing criminal allegations here. That there was fraud. That is illegal. And Ishwa, it does seem to be a case of playing catch up. When is sort of regulation by enforcement going to stop being the norm? Uh, because we keep hearing there's regulations on the books, but yet these things keep slipping through. Yeah, I think that is. Yeah, still you're a absolutely point right. I'd say that the regulatory about... dimensions are important. Oh, please go ahead. Um, sorry, um, there is a real quandary here about whether existing regulatory frameworks are going to be sufficient uh, to regulate what seems to be a new uh, or this purported to be a new asset class, um, or if a fundamentally different framework is uh, needed. And I think we are moving towards um, some sort of resolution, but there are basic definitional issues that still need to be sorted out. So, for instance, is a stable coin really a security or a commodity, or is it a narrow bank or is it a money market mutual fund? These are really important, but basically, I think we're dealing with more fundamental issues related to corporate governance, related to, um, you know, um, as your other guest mentioned, um, sheer fraud. So I think in this case, we have a combination of greed, hubris, and sheer incompetence. And the question is how we can protect investors and financial markets more broadly from this sort of obvious uh, malfeasance. Um, it's going to require a combination of, I think, existing regulation being enforced uh, in a much more effective way in this new sector, but also some new elements of regulation that require um, oversight in areas which seem to be decentralized, which seem to be very transparent, but where in fact there is much less transparency than you might uh, believe. Um, I think there is um, uh, certainly movement in Washington, but given how large the sector has become, how there might be potential spillovers to the traditional financial system, it's certainly going to be important for Congress, um, as your other guest uh, pointed out, uh, to move quickly rather than leaving it to the regulatory agencies one by one uh, to try to figure out uh, 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 what to do within the existing regulatory parameters. Kathy, you agree? I do. I think Congress needs to act. And to your point about regulation by enforcement, it absolutely goes after bad actors, but it does not provide clear requirements to those who are seeking to be responsible market participants to offer services and the opportunities of this new technology. So um, having a regulatory framework that's clear, having the industry working uh, closely together and, and putting these measures into place uh, around oversight are, are really important and uh, valuable for the future. I know these will be conversations we'll continue to have. A big thank you for joining us. Kathy Craninger there, former director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and Ishwar Prasad Tolani, senior professor of trade policy and professor of economics at Cornell University. Thank you both for joining us.